Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. A recent poll conducted by Ipsos Polling found that the top issue on Canadians' minds is no longer the COVID-19 pandemic. Residential school survivors in Saskatchewan, Canada are calling for documents pertaining to the Catholic school spending on residential school survivors to be released to the public. Amnesty International has called on Bangladesh to end the crackdown on people's freedom of expression online. The U.S. has announced that because of concerns over the rise of the Delta variant, it will no longer lift the existing travel restrictions yet. China has blamed the U.S. for deteriorating the U.S.-China relations. In an effort to reach gender equality on the field and on the screen, broadcasters for the Tokyo Olympic Games are trying to exclude overly sexualized images of athletes who are women. Wildfires in northwestern Ontario continue to rage on, causing increased air pollution. To start as the Canadian federal election draws nearer, several election polls have been conducted. One such poll by Ipsos has found that the COVID-19 pandemic is no longer the highest priority for Canadians. As of now, the most pressing concerns of Canadians' minds are healthcare, affordability and cost of living, climate change and economy. Notably, these are similar to concerns from two years ago. However, COVID-19 is still a priority, though not the highest. Indeed, it is the fifth most important issue. Turning now to Indigenous residential school survivors in Saskatchewan. As part of the court deal in 2005, the Catholic Church agreed to three deals that totaled $79 million for Indigenous residential school survivors in Saskatchewan, Canada. $25 million of this, however, was claimed by the Catholic Church as been having spent on in-kind services. These in-kind services are legally required to benefit survivors and their descendants directly. However, many residential school survivors have not heard of any of the community members receiving these funds and are calling for the kind services documents to be released so that the community can verify that the money was in fact spent as it was intended to be. As it stands, while the court has confirmed that the document exists, it is yet to release the document. In other news, Amnesty International has called on Bangladeshi authorities to end the crackdown on people's right to freedom of expression online and to repeal the Draconian Digital Security Act. Bangladesh has imprisoned some 433 people under the DSA. Those who have been targeted are journalists, musicians, activists, students and more. In recent COVID-19 news, the U.S. has put in place stringent travel restrictions for most non-U.S. citizens, particularly those who have traveled from the United Kingdom, India, China, South Africa, Brazil, and any of those coming from the 26 European countries belonging to the Xinjiang area are denied entrance into the nation. In the U.S., diplomat Wendy Sherman went to China earlier this week with the aim of re-establishing communication between the U.S. and China amid growing tensions between the two global superpowers. Sherman has called for China to cooperate with the U.S. on global issues including climate change and COVID-19 despite their differences. However, Chinese officials have been firm on their position that the U.S. will not get cooperation from China if it continues to try to combat the rise in power. China's Vice Foreign Minister Xia Feng blames the U.S. for the tensions between the nations, saying the United States wants to reignite a sense of national purpose by establishing China as an imaginary enemy. We think it's important for us to say directly to the Chinese officials in private what we say in public. It's in our interest to be very clear to Beijing about where we stand and explain our concerns in detail. And our philosophy is that we should not avoid hard topics. Currently, the China-U.S. relationship is in a stalemate and faces serious difficulties, fundamentally because some Americans portray China as an imagined enemy. Those in the U.S. hope that by demonizing China, they could somehow shift domestic public discontent over political, economic and social issues and blame China for its own profound structural problems to serve its domestic political ends. In Tokyo, in an effort to reach gender equality on the field and on the screen, broadcasters for the Olympic Games are trying to exclude overly sexualized images of athletes who are women. Olympic Broadcasting Services chief executive said, you will see in our coverage some things that you have not been seeing in the past, with details and close-ups on parts of the body. Similarly, a strong protest was made at the European Beach Handball event. 
After spending years protesting the uniforms, athletes from Norway refused to play in bikini bottoms and wanted to wear shorts instead. However, they were fined for breaking the clothing rules. Meanwhile, male athletes can play beach handball in shorts with impunity. Finally, hundreds of forest fires in Canada, particularly in northwestern Ontario, have left the air quality in the province poor and in some areas have resulted in poor visibility. Environment Canada has urged Ontarians to try to take steps to reduce their exposure to the chemicals and toxic pollutants being released into the air and have informed the public that shortness of breath, coughing, headaches are all potential side effects of these deteriorating conditions. As of today, 3,000 Indigenous Ontarians living near the fires have been evacuated from five Indigenous reserves. In response to this extreme weather, a recent survey conducted by Ipsos found that 49% of Canadians feel more strongly about fighting against climate change than before. That's all for today. Keep watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby.